previously. Tried really hard to not kill you. But fucking no. And so we go. Hello friends, my name's Internet, and welcome back to We Happy Few. We recently had to kill some people. Yep. And on we go, I suppose. <coughs> <laughs> oh, I was supposed to escape them? I fought them. Whoops. Nah, nah, what's all the scuffle? You've been having an altercation in the alley? Uh, nothing you need to worry about, Constable. I'll, uh, just be on my way. And where is it you're on your way to? Precisely. Just off to see an old friend on St. George. Oh, well, no need to be <gasps> in such a hurry. The bridge to St. George's, uh, under renovation. Sure it is. Oh, for how long? I hesitate to prognosticate, sir. Dr. Faraday's the only one who knows how to fix the uh, ridiculous contraptions on them bridges. Word has been sent, but we've not had the courtesy of a reply. Why don't you, uh, I don't know, uh, go to Dr. Faraday's house? Because Dr. F has removed to a secret location, the, uh, location which headquarters keeps, uh, uh secret. All right. Yes, I'll ask your headquarters then. You some kind of troublemaker. <laughs> Stay out of city business. Well, I suppose if I want to go and make up with Sally, I need to get Dr. Faraday to come fix his bridge. So I need to visit police headquarters and find out where he's gone. Not risky at all. It's always a little extra complicated with Sally, isn't it? Great. Need to watch out for the joy detectors, though. <coughs> Guess I've already been over here. Alright. Valentine Wells, const. Yolary? Okay. I have a feeling if I go the roundabout way, I won't have to go through the joy detector. Could be wrong, but we'll see. You can take your joy immediately. Poor thing. What's she on about? Oh, hello. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, dearie. Please don't tell anyone. I promise I'll stop crying. I'll take my joy, I promise. Don't worry, I will keep your secret. I miss them. I miss them so. I miss them too. You used to grow lilies. Lilies? I thought you meant the... Lilies? I overwatered them last year. Killed them. <coughs> and I can't find fresh bulbs anywhere. St. Gilead's. We used to grow them together, Violet and I, before her husband got so jealous. I've one of the last proper vegetable gardens in all of Hamlin, but no one will trade me lily bulbs. Well, you never know. Maybe some will turn up. Would you like some tea? Thanks, but I must be going. Poor thing. She does miss her lilies. And I think her, uh, friend, too. Wait a minute. There's a lily patch in the garden district, isn't there? On Lud's Hole. Every time we went past it, Percy told me the exact same thing about how a lily patch lasts for practically ever until you rip the bulbs out. Maybe I could do a nice, sad old lady a favor. Okay. Don't I have some, uh, lily bulbs, though? <laughs> Dear Jack, forgive a total stranger writing you, but I feel after all these years as if I know you better than I know many of the people in my family. To me, you're no longer Uncle Jack, you're Jack. I can see that you're a good and kind man, full of love and laughter. But Jack, I can tell that you are not fulfilled. Lately, has there been an edge in your voice, as if you know something is missing? Jack, I can tell 
that you are alone in this world. It's not fair that you, who have done so much to make us all feel less lonely, should have no girl who loves you best of all. Jack, I know this is terribly forward, but want to be that girl. I know I can make you personally happy. Please write back and let me know if you can help. Let me prove it to you. You deserve all the good things. I love you, Fiona Slaymaker. <clears throat> Lost letter page. And as you tighten the lid on, it squeaks ever so slightly as the glass rubs along the rubber, and as your rubber gloves rub along the lid. That done, you slowly strip off the rubber gloves, one by one, taking care not to get any of the water on your arms. The rubber gloves, half inside out, quiver slightly on the kitchen counter as they are shivering in the light. What do you want to do now, you ask? Eleanor's party is tomorrow. We promised to bring the balloons. You found balloons? Yes, I say, keeping my voice as steady as I can. Ten latex rubber balloons. The long kind you can twist into shapes. In my mind, I can already hear them squeal as I twist them, the thin rubber rubbing on itself. The Reverend John Dainty, St. Michael's Church, 22 Hither Lane, St. George Home. Dear Vicar, I am writing you because I was disturbed by the joke you made about a bell ring yesterday's sermon. I know everyone thought it was a very funny joke. I love a laugh as much as anyone, and I thought it was funny at the time. But then it began to bother me, not in the sense of feeling bad or sad, of course, but philosophically. Who are we to mock downers in Christ's church? Did Christ mock the poor and downtrodden? Or did he mock the Pharisees and hypocrites? Do we really want to start by downing a hundred downers? Drowning a hundred downers? Where would we end? I know I'm going on entirely too long about one joke, but it is important to keep up standards, don't you think? As a vicar, we look to you to set the standard, don't you? It's perfectly fine when Uncle Jack makes jokes about downers. No one takes him too seriously. Not when he has his jolly hat on. And I have laughed at many a downer joke. It seems we tell new ones every day. At any rate, they seem new. But in a sermon, shouldn't we have more sympathy? Instead of mocking, shouldn't we be praying for downers to come to their senses and take their joy again? Your most devotedly, Sylvia Hockney. Dear Mrs. Brown, we of the Ladies' Village and Improvement Society would like to thank you for the many years you have done such a superb job contributing to the loveliness of our dear village of Hamlin. Although you live on your own, as so many of us do these days, the figures you have painted in your windows have given us, given so many of us a feeling of neighborly comfort. It is good to feel watched over, even if the watchers are not necessarily three-dimensional. However, in the past little while, we regret to say we have noticed that your windows are beginning to deteriorate a bit. No doubt you have been terribly busy. We all have so many things to do, but it rather spoils the effect when the paint begins to flick. It no longer trumps the loyal, if you will. In particularly, in particular, the adorable grandmother in the second story window to the right has lost parts of her jaw and looks a bit monstrous. I'm sure this is not intentional. Indeed, who looks at her own house? And on joy, one tends not to notice uncomfortable little details. But some of us have begun to notice it and to question why you have not seen to it. Surely you're not a secret downer, they say. Of course you are not a downer, and we are positive that you'll show them wrong by fixing up your house once again in your own inimitable style. All the best, Helen Burton Shaw, Ladies Improvement Society. Jack, I know what you did. When I feel like it, I will tell them. Tell them your nemesis OS. And then there was Sally. And then there was Sally just off the King's Road. I wonder if Winston Churchill ever practiced and practiced his speech. And then when he gave it, it came out all hateful accusations and vitriol. And not at all what he wanted to say. Probably not. She was being all lovely and slipped the surly bonds of earth Sally. Even, only even more so. And then she said she was mates with Sir Robert B., or more than mates, I suppose. But from then on, all I could think of was that horrible night. I wanted to beat a hasty retreat, but my legs wouldn't move and my mouth wouldn't stop. The really stupid thing is that I desperately need a letter of transit if I'm going to get back into the city out of Wellington Wells. And Sally, Sally offered to get me one, and so I cleverly chased her off. The thing is, I don't trust her. She's always so wonderful when she was there, but a girl like Sally always has so many better places to be better people to be with, or worse people that she prefers anyway for some reason. And sometimes she'd just hide in Percy's old room in the attic and knock them down. Who knows what's going on with her now? I could try again. She's living on King's Road somewhere with bars on her windows and an unlocked door. Couldn't be that hard to find, as I could hardly be more of an artist than just now, so there's nothing to lose except my pride, again. And I could swallow my pride. 
for Percy's sake. Alright, cool. Uh, oh. Let's do this. And then we'll go to the next one. I better be careful. Warning, toxic fog spotted. When going through it, you'll have to wear a gas mask. You'll have to wear a gas mask. Is there not a way out of here? Have I gone through here for literally no reason? This poor person. The door opens onto a wall. Motherfucker. Oh, I should eat something. And let's go ahead and take a healing bomb. You can take your joy, Kitty. Shh. Yeah. Eager for me, Jack Worthy. Ah, shite. How do I get through here? Out taking joy. Ah. Can I go up more? up here for? Oh, I guess it's the place to hide from the bobbies. Okay. Uh, huh. There's gotta be a way through here. I'll figure it out. Let's try going this way. Here. If I go this way, will anybody notice I'm gone? Nope, I am home free. <sighs> Thank heavens. <coughs> it's probably how I get around back as well. Alright. Cool. Let's go grab some lilies. Yourself, Arthur. <coughs> you don't see me at all. Sorry, sir. Lado is currently closed for beautification. Yes, I'm uh, here to help beautify it. Oh, isn't that good of you? Please show me your credentials from the beautification committee. Uh, which credentials, exactly? Right, well, 
I'm sure the O Current will let you know when Lud Home has been beautified, and you can visit. to the lily bowl, so I guess this one. Can I get there from this way? <sighs> I hope so. I don't think I can. around a bit more. I might be able to find it the other way. <laughs> this looks like a shop. Can I go in this direction? Nope. Alright. Can I go this way? is over there. Can't climb one of these walls, can I? Nope. Oh. Oh shit. some other direction. Oh, this is how I got out earlier, isn't it? Yep, and then I went through that way. Okay. Playing hopscotch. Well, there was a TV there last time. This is a completely different place. Nothing there. This other place that I can hide from the bobbies. That's pretty good. <sighs> Hello, sirs. Name is Emojin. Alright, so I need to get around there somehow. Oh, I'm on the other side of this. Oh, that's how I turn you off. Okay. Not that I need to right now, though. Okay, okay yeah, I'm so check. It's a police box. There's gotta be a way around there, right? How do I get over there? Probably this way. I don't think this is a direction I can go. Is it? No. <coughs> Maybe this way? It's just another hidey place. Oh, well, this is interesting. <laughs> oh, fancy. Best I don't talk to anyone. In case they recognize me as a downer. Um. in the puddle with me. It's ever so much fun. Good lord, that's Motterling. 
one spark and she's going to incinerate herself. I've got to get her attention somehow. Maybe a lot of pretty flowers would do it. Whee! <laughs> oh, aren't you a dear? You sure you want to be stomping around in Motoline? It's quite dangerous. Oh my goodness! This is Motoline. What am I thinking? <coughs> I'd better get out of this puddle, hadn't I? The fumes must have gone to my head. Yeah. It's just that I miss stomping around in the rain, you see? I don't have a raincoat. I used to have one. Do you know what happened to it? <coughs> well, neither do, you do I, Lord, neither do I. I could make one, you know. I know the secret. To sewing through rubber, you have to know the trick. I yep. know. You bring me an old raincoat, I'll make myself a new raincoat. And I'll teach you the secret of sewing through rubber. Okay. Yep. <laughs> An old shimmering coat. Do I have one of these? Oh, I need trainers. I have a shredded rain coat in my possession. Don't <coughs> I? to go. There was parkour in this game. You got this, bud. Ah, maintenance hatch. Oh, fuck my life. Okay, down I go. Ah, seems like a great time to read a diary. <coughs> Monday, made it this far. The hardest part was continuing to work without joy, seeing how daft they are. All are, but pretending, pretending to be, pretending to be like them while I made my plans. Oh yes, I'm a great pretender. She was always so sure there was a resistance plotting away. Why can't I find them? The celebrated Mr. K says there isn't such a thing, but she is so sure. Is he lying? Doesn't he trust me? I suppose there's no reason for him to do. Will he help? Tuesday. Does she miss me? She's always stiff up her lip, but every now and then one detects a twinge of feeling behind her mask. She'd say, would you like some tea, love? And I could swear she meant more. And that's what I meant when I said it to her. She never called anyone else love. And sometimes her hand would linger for just a moment when I handed her the cup. I miss her. I don't miss the rest of the lot. Certainly not that awful arse they're always making googly eyes at me. Wednesday. Mr. Kite says to lay low a bit longer. If I turn off the pump, the water will build up. If there's an intruder, I can just turn the power on. Thursday. Oh, God. I dreamed V and I were swimming. We swam and swam. We turned around and we couldn't see well and see wells anymore. 
and then we dove for a million fathoms and then I lost her in the darkness. Friday. Nervous wreck. Two bobbies chased me coming back from the phone booth. Thank God I rigged the electricity. They made the most awful sound. I wonder if they had sweethearts and some girls missing them right now the way or is someone just popping an extra joy and trying to forget why? Saturday. More dreams of V. Even after I woke, I stayed in bed with my eyes closed so I wouldn't lose the feeling she was with me. I could still go to a mood booth and pretend nothing happened, but I won't. I won't do it. Not even if she meant the way she looked at me. She'd never stray from her appointed path, no matter how much she loved anyone. I suppose she mustn't. She's not really English, is she? I wonder if she's really the daughter of uh, Maharaj. Uh, she mustn't let anyone remember her skin is dark and her hair is dark and her eyes. Mustn't think about that. But she stands there like a statue sometimes, and she seems like someone out of Bhagavad Gita. If you take away the jodhpurs and riding suit and put her in robes of silk. <clears throat> Mustn't think about that. Now is the time to dare and endure, says the old man. Sunday, nauseated. Cook's Bobby was bad enough, but now it's rotting Bobby. I need a new shelter pronto. Must find out if Kay thinks it's safe to move. Time to leave another message. Uh, Father James McCartney, St. John the Evangelist Church, South Parade, Wellington Wells. Dear Father McCartney, it was so lovely to bump into you by the fountain the other day. I hope I didn't seem too distracted. I might have had a bit too much joy that morning. You know how it is these days. Has it really been so long since I was an altar boy in your choir? It feels like yesterday. I have a favor to ask you. It's been seven years, years now, if I remember right, which who knows anymore, that I've felt out of step with the rest of the congregation at St. Michael's. <sighs> More and more they argue about what Christ's forgiveness means if nobody can remember what they're asking forgiveness for. To tell the truth, I long for the old certainties I had as a boy. I might miss absolution. I miss body and blood. I miss going forth to sin no more. I want to return to the church. But I doubt Gillian would take kindly to my returning to the fold. Her knitting club is all, is all St. Michael's. Her flower arranging friends are all St. Michael's. Our neighbors are all St. Michael's. Is it wrong to want to convert in secret, and to take mass in secret? I suppose we did in the earliest days of church, didn't we? I cannot remember the things I have done, but confession and mass wash all sins clean, do they not? Would you have me back? He was most devotedly Robin Wilbur. Willoughby. 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 Okay. Interesting. Okay, so now I gotta go around here. No! God, no. I suppose I could get back here. It's sloshy. Good place for giant octopi. Indeed. No, no, no. Ooh, I can make jerky? Hell to the yes. And a water filter. Ooh, I can make mojo. I like making jerky. Ah. Uh, very nice. Use all that raw meat. Water filter. There's joy and impurity from water. Single usage. Ah. Go ahead and make those. I don't really care for that. Is that all I've got over here? Chemistry upgrade kit. Is there a little bunch over here? Yeah. Is there any blueprint that double plus wood? The hell is that? Just in press recording some light and take your joy. Let's look around a little bit more before I ah secure area. Stop doing it. Ah, balls. Well, that feels 
was entirely too good. How do I use... Use a water filter. I have it on me. You. How do I use you? You're in gadgets. Which is three. Or is it four? Maybe I need to fill a canteen. Just to get here. Very yeah, nice. Where was uh ah uh, uh, yep I haven't been there yet. I needed to get to here. Oh hello. Two bobby pins. Very nice. Alright. The actual help. Oh, Joy's running out. Got it. Plenty of bobby pins at least. Alright. Use you. I'll figure it out. Whatever. Let's just go uh, eat something, I guess. And let's see what. 
this text message says. Do, 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 do. What do we got? Okay. <clears throat> I do believe I am going to end this episode here. So, eat this fruit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. Clean that setting out. Bye!